Hi, everybody. Welcome to Am I the Asshole podcast, AITA pod. I'm Danny Vega, joined today by my lovely, lovable co-host, the meme queen herself, the Christmas queen herself. Why not, people? The Hanukkah goddess. Ha- uh, well, you know, if why I'm not? the Christmas queen, then Christmas is going to be bleak this year. But it kind of already oh, is, so that does track. Yeah, no. It, 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 well, it's not bleak for me. That's actually, That's this is my talking point because oh, nothing... We're we're trying we're kind of getting ahead on episodes, so I don't have any juice for you guys because like nothing has happened in two days. Yeah, yeah, it's, just... it's kind of tough. I have no talking points except that we canceled our Christmas. So, <laughs> I mean, I already used this on the on the bonus set, but basically it was pretty funny because my brother and I were like, "Oh, let's get Oreo blizzards," and then my dad was like, "Oh, okay," and then uh, me and him were just talking and and shooting the shit, and then like. 10 minutes later, my dad's like, so what are you guys getting a uh, Dairy Queen? Because uh, I thought you guys were doing that. And I wanted you to pick me he up. He really something. wants it. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's funny. But I did want to throw back and and go to, you know, and, and shout out to anybody else who had this experience. But man, I think December 2020 was a real bottom for me uh, in the COVID pandemic. Yeah. And I bring this up not to not to take us to a dark place, but rather that I, I hope all y'all, oh boy, I'm getting emotional as I say this. I hope all y'all, I, look, all, I, all I've been doing is I've been in Arizona. I'm at my parents' house. Like nothing particularly special is happening. I'm just with them. And last year, uh, December 2020 was a very dark time for me. I actually had my darkest moment on Christmas Eve. My brother was going to meet up with me, but I had spent the entire day with nobody. I, I just, I didn't have anybody around. All my friends were gone. I was walking around Williamsburg. No one was there. Just no one. It, Damn, I'm like, where was I? Yeah, I don't know where you were. Huh. No one was there. I'm walking around. I got no one. I feel like I got no one. And then I, I did smoke this bad strain of CBD. So oh, no. it was kind of That'll CBD fault. Oh. So I hit the CBD and it's like five o'clock and the sun's obviously already down. It's like just dark and it was foggy. It was really like literary mm. how much the the scene and, and there was no one there, man. And there's always people walking around the park. Not a single person walking around the park. And it just really felt like mm. I was the last person on earth. And I remember Oof. having the thought, like, I should, like, my life is over. Like, I, not like I should end my life, like, in a too dramatic way. But just, like, there's no reason to be alive. Damn. But I was, like, it was really a dark time. And I just thought, as long as I keep walking, I won't be dead. And I'll be fine oh as goodness. long as I keep walking. And so I'm just like walking around the park like a crazy person, like, ah! and just like <laughs> su- in such a bad mood. And then emerging from the fog was my brother. Aww. And uh, it was fine. It was fine after that. Um, it wasn't good, good but, but it wasn't, f- it, it was fine. And, you know, I had, I, and there were good moments I was trying to remember too. I also got the pie cake in and the oh, Christmas the version. Oh, the pie cake in. Yeah, that was fun, uh, yeah, right? It's good the times, pie- good times. For those of you who weren't there, the pie cake in was a uh, amazing mix of uh, Thanksgiving uh, desserts, and it was a, a pumpkin pie and a pecan pie Ugh, and uh, apple cream pie kind of thing. I can't remember the third so one necessarily, but it really was very good. And then, kind of furthering this Christmas bottom, I got the Christmas version of the pie cake in, and it was not good. Boo. It was. It was not good. And I was what? like, I don't need no. this. I needed my dessert to deliver. I have so. Ugh, but sucks. yeah, you know, shout out to everyone who might have had a tough COVID and wasn't able to see their family. And, and I hope and I hope that was very few of you or none of you. And, mm-hmm. and I it just it, and, and it just and I know it's cliched, but it's always good to just be grateful. And that's it. I'm, I'm feeling a lot of gratitude for just like, oh, I'm with my parents. What a gift. You know, I didn't get that last year and I got to feel how miserable that was. So. Oh, that's so nice. Ugh, that's tough. I will say I never felt like a, my, like a minority until I graduated college and had to celebrate Christmas in the real world, a.k.a. like had to contend with the fact that literally nothing is open, like the movie theater and the Chinese right. restaurant. And I know it's a stereotype, but honestly, it's true. Like, there is straight up nothing to fucking do. And I was in Atlanta, so, like, I, I don't know. I feel like I didn't necessarily go home for Christmas every time. Um, and I was just like, holy shit. Like, talk about feeling alone. I can't do anything. I can't order delivery. Like, I'm just by myself with my Netflix. So, yeah, I feel for you. I, yeah, well, that's interesting. You know, the cultural aspect there. I mean, it's it's got to be very tough to feel isolated from the culture you're in. It, you know, it's so boring. Honestly, I just have to say, like, it's it's very annoying 
to have everything closed for like a holiday that I don't even celebrate. Like it's forced boredom and it, it fucking sucks. So <laughs> no, it's super, it's annoying for all of us. I mean, it's annoying right? even for us celebrating it, you know, cause it's like, yeah, I'm like, look, I mean, this is not to quote my own tweet here, but look, I'm a disgusting person. You guys already know. So I, I tweeted like this is, and I feel this like every day where I'm like, you know, I feel that nobody should have to work horrible hours and like, mm -hmm. like, I don't, God, I don't want to live in a world where anybody has to work on at like, on like Christmas day. I don't want to live in that world, but then, you know, it'll be Christmas and I'm like, why can't I get a Starbucks? Well, what is yeah, wrong? It's I know, and I'm and I'm not saying that like things should be open. It's just like a weird experience where I don't know, no other federal holiday does the world like really shut down like that. Maybe New Year's Day, but right, right. you know, any any other bank holiday, like you can find something to do. So it's just like a very unique experience, I feel like. It is. No, it is unique. Anyway, uh, much love for all y'all. Please rate, review, and subscribe. Please give us feedback. We're getting really good feedback from various channels. We got a great co YouTube comment today. I was very flattered by this. Um, somebody said that they like the pod, they love the pod, that their boyfriend will only listen to this AITA pod. I was very flattered by that. All right. So, I want to know approved. why. That's, that's awesome. He, well, they, they, she wrote that the boy would really react to our little arguments and stuff. So he's he's getting oh. in, he's getting in it with us. So Let's if you're go. listening Let's to this go. boy, throw us a submish, you know, in the in the form aitapod.com because you know if you're trying to if you're trying to spar with us, we'd love to hear it, folks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they also this is interesting. They said I'm not a beta. They said Danny is an interesting male perspective. He's not a beta mm -hmm. and he's not a machista. And machista is Spanish for sexist, and so. Uh, I was flattered by this. I, I, I am. I, I put, yeah, I put this on Insta story and someone said, I believe that's called a gentleman. And I was like, oh my God, huh. no one has oh. ever said I'm huh. a gentleman. I'll take it. Huh. I love it. Love to hear it, folks. Uh, all right, let's do some guess the verdict. Here we let's go. go. AITA for outshining the bride because of my makeup. Mm. Here's what I'm Classic. imagining. I haven't mm -hmm. read this situation, but I'm imagining like, OP is super into makeup and can do really cool things. And the bride is more like granola and like doesn't wear a lot of makeup. And OP has always been like this and everybody knows. Um, and I'm going to go with it's not coming from the bride. It's coming from her family or friends or something like that. So I'm going to go with not the asshole and they are. That is incorrect. That said, I am giving you, uh, I'm going to give you a quarter of a point, even though it will cost me probably the game. But I think it's only fair because you did really <clears throat> call out OP so clean. And that was impressive oh, to me. Thank you. She, OP is a makeup queen. You just nailed that. OP yep. says they've been doing makeup professionally their entire adult life. They're just killing it on the makeup game, folks. Yep. Um, and you also read into this pretty well. Sister-in-law is a tomboy, which I think we can give it to her, guys. Granola, tomboy, pretty similar. Hey. So here's the story pretty much that she wore a quote unquote full face of makeup go approaches um the which is brother, normal this to is, do for a wedding by the way thank you i felt like it was okay i felt Completely. like it was very normal and the wife to you know the wife there at the wedding gave her a cold shoulder and then there's all this fallout because she's so like that's a sister-in-law yeah that's a sister-in-law okay, okay. It's, it's her husband's brother's wife wedding okay Husband basically is like, well, why couldn't you just tone it down for one night? Because there was all this like fallout, you know? So add mm -hmm. puzzle headed 3823 wrote, I'm torn on this one because from the language you use in writing this, it's coming across that you may have been trying to upstage your sister-in-law out of spite. You also mm -hmm. kind of speak negatively in a passive aggressive way about her look. At the same time, it also seems like she didn't actually talk to you. She just expected you to intuit what kind of look she would be doing to tone down your makeup accordingly. So I'm going ESH. Um, there's a whole laundry list of okay. I, these I feel like maybe we should do this episode or on the on an episode because it sounds interesting. It is pretty interesting. I, I mean, we could go through the laundry list of slights and the kind of way she words it, but really, I think this kind of sums it all up. OP's username was the bad sister-in-law makeup, which you get it. <laughs> like that's basically it. She was she was kind of taking her down a peg as she wrote this thing. So isn't she the bad sister in law because of the makeup? That's how I read that. She wrote, my sister in law looked lovely as expected and her makeup was dot 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 fine. 
By oh. wedding standards, her makeup was very minimalistic, but it suited her. Okay, frankly, that's I did. Fair. Frankly, I did put on a little. I did put it on a little thick, as they say, but it's not like I was wearing crazy colors or a revealing okay. dress. So this top comment basically goes in hard on the mm. ESH aspect because of these passive aggressive comments. I guess I see it more of like you're a professional and you're just ridiculing like other professionals work. Like yeah. that was what I, yeah. I take the, um, you know, it's light for wedding makeup to be because wedding makeup is like really heavy. But if you're a makeup artist right, right, who right. is intense about her makeup and you admit that you put it on thick, then you put it on really thick. So True. I, I could see the ESH aspect right right hmm that's a good one that's a good one all right well here's what i have for you aita for pointing out that it's sexist that my sisters-in-law all got family heirloom rings and my fiance did not hmm well, that doesn't strike me as sexist so i'm just gonna hit that with a yta and probably be wrong damn you're right yes yes Dude, you are so right i'm just gonna basically read the situation because it's really short um but basically op got engaged recently the fiance said he'd expected his mother to give him one of her rings as she did for his sisters but she refused and said family heirlooms are are for family not for women who marry in when we saw my future mother-in-law and she congratulated me i saw her make a face at the ring so i told her if she didn't like it it was her own fault for being sexist and financially favoring her girls she ended up refusing to speak to me due to the disrespect i'm confused about if that was wrong to say yeah so yikes um the top comment was yita you aren't entitled to a family heirloom it makes sense that she would give the rings to her daughters rather than you that isn't sexism that's how heirlooms work um and i do have to agree it's in the name, air. Yeah, room. yeah. I also think like it would be a nice gesture for her to give the ring to the son to give to her, but by no means mandatory. And I think immediately jumping to sexism is like a super asshole move. Not a fan. Yeah, no, def not. All right, you got one. AITA for wanting to quote unquote verify my husband's chores. This gives do, me YTA do, energy, do, 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 but do, do, you're tricky. Do. So, okay, he probably isn't doing the chores. Is, uh, is she overbearing or is she pushed to the brink? I mean, that's a classic mm, conundrum. The classic conundrum. <laughs> the classic female conundrum. Um, yes. Let's see. Wanting to verify. I'm going to go with ugh, my first instincts was YTA. I feel like I should stick with it, but I'll go ESH. ESH is wrong the people i think i gotta clinch this one folks so here's the dealio Hub, hubby and wifey start a points based chores game i actually was kind of a fan of this i i thought this was kind oh, of oh is this cute... an old one? Oh yeah i'm always digging <sighs> the archive sarah i know you i know you've read all the new ones no. i'm digging i'm holding that space bar until no. i am deep in the archives folks what is that scroll yeah huh. 10 for dinner. Okay, that's the point system. 10 for uh -huh. making the person dinner, 5 for doing laundry, etc. They do not document the full extent of the game, but you get it, people. Yeah, I don't need now, to Now, here's where I liked the game. I thought this was very sweet. The prize was something chill, like a back rub or a serenade. And I thought that was wonderful. I was like <laughs> I was like this is so good. This is going to foster a nice tender moment, nice physical affection. You know, maybe a serenade if your love language is words and a back rub if you like to get touch time. It just felt very sweet. And it's like you both have to do it. It felt playful. I really love this couple. I was all in. Mm -hmm. But then husband, ugh, he wants to change the prize to if you win, someone else has to do the dishes. Problem, mm -hmm. doing the dishes is part of the game. I'm like, so that doesn't actually add up because yeah. then... You're using an element of the game as a punishment in the game. That's very odd. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. That's generally not how games work. Husband ends up winning the first four weeks in a row that they play the game. Wifey takes a picture of the board to show her friend the game, sees it later, and is like, huh, that, that looks wrong. I remember my points being higher. She <gasps> has the picture, corroborates her suspicion. No. Okay. Husband, low key, uh, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. Gaslights her. Yep. Says he feels disrespected. And no, that's he must a have gaslight. Just, he must have just smudged it. 
No. <sighs> okay. Wife says, "Why don't we use a Google Doc? We love an edit history Google Doc. We sure see do. You edited what? Okay." He gets all like, meh, meh, meh. Oh, you don't and trust me. Fuck off. Exactly. Oh, and another penalty against husband was one time she was doing the dishes and he like went behind her and was like, yeah, you better wash those dishes. Ew. Rubbing it in her face that he won. The top comment went to big butt effer, which I am going to give a top 10 usernames to because it made me laugh. Now. I also think anyone who is listening to, is like binge listening the episodes and keeps track of all of our usernames that we've awarded an award to and sends it to us should like get some stickers or something. Yeah, we'll send you a mug if you put together a, yes. a long list of all the top usernames I've yes. called out. Maybe all, we'll all the find times we have failed to count to 10. <gasps> yeah, no, I'm sure I said, I've said top like 10 usernames. Or like 300 top 10 over. usernames. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Big Butt Effer wrote, NTA, all you need to say is the whiteboard isn't working and Google Docs is the only way to keep track safely. Easy peasy, but he's cheating in the game. And then being a sore winner it. and gloating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Yeah. Yep. Can't blame her. All right. Here we go. AITA for making my boyfriend eat meat at my family gathering, even though he's vegetarian. I mean, how could she not? Okay. What kind of situation? Why would he be forced to eat meat? Forcing a vegetarian to meat, eat meat. I don't see any way around that, but you're tricky. So maybe he did do something messed up. He, he didn't do something. So I'm going to throw an ESH out there. Oh, man, my mind games have worked. No, I mean, ah. the thought, how could she How could she possibly not be the asshole is correct. I mean, she's a monster. Um, the This OP and her boyfriend have been dating for two years, and they have just, the, he's like going home to meet her family for Christmas they've never met mm-hmm. before, um, which I'll give it a pass for the pandemic, but any other time I'd be like, why is that? Okay, um, but... OP fucked up because she forgot to tell her family that the boyfriend's a vegetarian. So the mom made a turkey and like some snacks, but there wasn't a whole lot else to eat. Mm. And OP quietly asked the boyfriend to please not call the scene, just eat the food and compliment my mom on it. So, I mean, yeah, he did it because, wow, this guy does not deserve her. Um, Mm. And he did it and that was it. Um, But obviously he is pissed. So the top comment was... YTA, respecting your boyfriend's feelings, beliefs, and personal decisions should be more important than avoiding a slightly awkward situation, especially one that would have been your fault for not mentioning he was vegetarian in the first place. Well, there you go. Look at that. You went double YTA. And it was bold, but guys, it looks like I'm going to clinch this one with one point to a quarter of a point. (laughs) Ah, Can't win them all. Can't win them all, folks. Big ups to our new patrons. I'm still mad about this one. I'm mad Danny. about this. You're it's mad? Crazy. Danny, Julia, Elise, I'm mad about this, this person who's like, no, just eat meat and possibly get sick because also crazy. I'm just like, that's such a big thing to forget to mention. You know, like, oh, yeah. I'm kind of like, you probably don't care about this guy at all. No, she's a monster. But you know who's not a monster? Monster, our new patrons. Yes. Danny, Julia, Elise, Kiana, Elena, and Margie, welcome. And I apologize because I did mess up the structure of the show. Usually I would put the feedback. Not after guess the verdict, but here we are, folks. I'm going to whip through this. Anti-UPS hate. We love to read it. <laughs> Got this Honestly, one on send us your UPS slander. We really live for it. UPS once delivered expensive tech equipment to my house that my dad needed for his company. They left it all on our porch, unsigned and unsheltered. Guess what? It got rained on. Ooh. My dad complained. UPS blacklisted her address, oh. so we always had to pick up packages from their warehouse in the city 40 minutes away because they made our delivery time on their route at the exact time nobody was home. We moved, and I bet the people there are still suffering. Oof, that's rough. UPS always does some shit, too, where they'll be like, oh, you live right next to a drop-off point? No, we're going to make you go three miles away to pick up your package. Like, what is that bullshit? United Petty service that's what it stands for there we not go. my most clever joke but i no. did pause for a very long time so it was also poorly delivered here is even <laughs> more ups hate folks Good. me it. and my mom went to quebec for a few days in mid nove and we were walking on a tour on an old part of the city some ups driver stopped to make a delivery and put his loud hazard sound on the whole group had to wait until the truck left for us to be able to continue the tour because it was so loud <laughs> Anyways, keep doing what you're doing. You guys rock. Thanks for being the best part of my work day. I listen on my commute. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Thank you, OP. Oh, that's kind of funny. You. I'm like, man, that isn't really his fault, but I don't care. We hate UPS. 
We hate you, P.S. <laughs> All right, people. We've got a very juicy situation-packed episode. We're going to try to run through a lot of submissions that have been yeah. sitting in the queue. I have to just be honest with everyone. We're so flattered. We, we really are trying our best. But A, it's the holidays. And B, we are getting record levels of submissions, so, like, comments. Multi- we used to get like one every couple of days. Mm-hmm. We're getting like multiple a day. I'm I'm really trying, guys. I honestly it's try nice. to let zero drop. But like it's becoming impossible. So yeah, no. I just... I apologize, but if you, again, and it really never bothers me to get a double thing, or I'd rather get a reminder, please don't submit it twice because then it gets confusing and I don't know what I posted or not. But it never hurts to reach out on Instagram and be like, yo, Danny, post this right now, please. It's very important to me, and mm-hmm. I will try my best. Much love to all y'all. It's it's truly touching, heartwarming, meaningful, other adjectives to get this much attention. Didn't seem sincere when I said other adjectives, it but trust sure me, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I just ran out of words. I ran I out of words, it. okay? I get it. All right, guys, here we go. Our second story of the day, AITA for liking one of my ex's best friends. Don't be fooled. There's going to be many situations. But first, oh, yeah, AITA. That's more than three. We got to whip through these. AITA for telling my roommate her boyfriend comes over too much. I, hmm. 23F. Have been living with my current roommate, 23F, for five years now. Look at that. Five Since years. Since you're 18? Dang. Damn. Starting in the college dorms with other roomies and now just the two oh, of us. Yeah, that makes sense. We get sense. along great and we have a fun time together. Now, she recently got her first boyfriend. When they first started dating, she would tell me when he was coming over. But I said he's more than welcome anytime. No need to let me know. He yeah. ended up being over at least five days a week, ooh, and sometimes more, which got to be a lot. Mm. I'd asked her if she had ever gone to his place, and she said, quote, unquote, we haven't talked about it. That's- so I said, quote, maybe you could rotate whose place you go to so he isn't over all the time. I feel like I have a third roommate. I've had a boyfriend for four years, so the majority of us living together, we've always been considerate as to how often he comes over. AITA for telling her that her boyfriend comes over too often. I definitely feel like if this was posted to the subreddit, it would get rejected because there doesn't really seem to be a conflict here. Like the subreddit has become draconian and Orwellian and it's censorship. The the standards are too high. I don't even understand the rules anymore. No, sometimes like really good shit will get rejected for being like a relationship problem. And I'm like, (laughs) well, anything between two people is kind of a relationship problem. So I don't really know what we're supposed to do. Right. But this one doesn't seem to have a conflict. It's like you ask totally reasonable five days a week is like absurd. I'd be really mad. Um, she doesn't seem to have been been annoyed or called you, you the asshole. I actually don't love the way she's communicating with this. Uh, yeah. I think this is a misstep. Yeah, because look at what you're doing. What, what do we say over and over ad nauseum? It makes some people sick to even hear me say this yet again, but always frame it in terms of you. You're not framing it in terms of you. You're telling her her boyfriend comes over too often. I don't understand. What's the problem? How does that affect you? You're not even telling her. You're just attacking her and telling her what she's doing is wrong. It's no good, right? Even wording it like, I feel like he comes over too often. No, that's still not about you. You got to find a better reason. Be like, hey, I'd really like a nice quiet, like on Thursdays, you know, I'd really like a, a, I'd like to come home after work and and not be bothered. Or like when your boyfriend came over the other day, you guys are very loud. I was trying to read. I couldn't really read. So like, you can't just tell someone. I guess, but I don't even think you should have to have concrete examples for not wanting to have a third roommate. Like, I just think it's not what she signed up for. And like, if they're being, if, even if they're not like making a mess and being loud and he's over almost every single day of the week like that's too much and that's not fair why why is that too much that's how i would be like yo we're not bothering you we're not doing anything we're in our room together so why is that bothering you you're just making up rules as you go like i don't know because they didn't sign up to live with a third person for a reason but they're not like what is the bathroom being held up like they i need a concrete reason otherwise it's like i don't understand what the issue is here he doesn't live here literally his shit's not here kind of does that's the thing He's kind of off and over, but he doesn't physically live there. He doesn't wake up there every day. Like, I don't know. I mean, nearly every day. It's kind of like he's almost living there at least five days a week. I just don't, I, you know, I, I just don't feel this way. And like when I had I a roommate that did this, I Whatever. did this, I did. I mean, I'll tell you, this happened to me. I had a roommate that did this. Her boyfriend would, would be there all the night. And you know what? I never cared. I did not care. To be fair, they were never in a common space. They were always in her room. It never bothered me. Uh, what bothered me is that he would slam the door and I must have begged. God, I must have begged. Oh my God, I'm so happy this part of my life is over. I like the when your boyfriend slams the door, it wakes me up every single time. Please do not slam the door. Mm. But 
he would always slam the door. There was nothing I could do. So that drove me insane, you know? And we ended up doing the same thing because I was like, well, if those are the rules, you know, then my girlfriend can just live here. And, and she did. And she didn't pay rent or anything. She just lived there. She never even knew because I kind of feel like she was barely over. So I don't know. I think there's a way to approach this. I think just be going in hard and being like, five days a week is too many. I mean, she didn't say that. She just said, maybe you could rotate whose place you go to. I feel like I have a third roommate. I don't think really it's that bad. It's not like the optimal feelings I statement, but I think it's pretty like softly worded. Yeah, I think maybe saying like, I always want, maybe I'd word it like this then. If you're going to go this broad and not be concrete, I would just be like, look, I've always tried to show you respect. You know, my boyfriend is only going to come over two days a week. He's actually never come over more often than that. And I would just really appreciate if you could show me similar respect, maybe three days a week. I would just appreciate Uh, it. I feel like that sounds accusatory. Like I would just say, I feel like we should have a meeting about like how often the boyfriends can be coming over or something or like come to some sort of agreement. Like accuse, I think accusing her of being disrespectful is kind of worse than just being like, maybe you could switch it up a bit. No, yeah, you're right. Maybe switch it up a bit is, is good, but it's very passive. And I mean, it's not I think that... that's how you start. Yeah, no, I, I think I it's like a good to start starting passive point. And then ramp up if necessary. I'm with you. I know you're right. Maybe my respect statement, maybe she would infer that that was implying that she was being disrespectful. And you're right. That's a danger zone there. So I I think you're right. I think start soft. But yeah, I just I don't think wording it your boyfriend comes over too often is going to yield good results. I think I think I feel like I have a third roommate is very fair. And that is a feeling. That's an I statement. Yeah. Yeah. ATA for telling my roommate her boyfriend comes over too much. I think we agree this has to be handled judiciously. But I don't think anyone's the asshole here. No, I don't think so either. She's just in a new relationship. She's enthusiastic. And so she's the roommate's not the asshole. AITA for liking one of my ex's best friends. Oh boy. My ex never wanted to show attention and really only treated me like a toy. Hey. So we went out together his, with his friends. I instantly felt connected to his friend when I looked at him. What? I know that true love at first sight is bullshit, but it happened to me. Oh my God. Oh. My eyes, my eyes are, okay. <laughs> Breathe. There's no reason to become emotional, Danny. And I don't know how to interact with him. And he's obviously loyal to my ex. So he's kind of just ignoring me. No, OP, what are you doing? What? I was able to get contact. I'm fucking confused. Keep going. I was able to get contact with one of his other best friends. And he thinks I might have a chance if I just slowly but surely be at least friends with my ex. Then I might be able to date his friend. But I don't. I kind of feel like a biatch if I do actually date him. Wow. This is a whole big nope. Um, so first of all, I don't really understand the timeline here. Is this guy really your, he sounds like a piece of like crap, but also like, is this really your ex? Like you hung out with his friends, presumably while you're still dating this guy and you instantly feel love at first sight with this friend who's also not giving you the time of day. And you're trying to maneuver past that, even though everyone Yeah, through another friend, like that's not good. I mean, you read as a high schooler to me, OP, and like, look, this is pretty standard high school behavior, but I just wouldn't mess with that group of friends. Just get out. Yeah, don't become friends with your ex as like a triad, as a conduit. Also, this guy doesn't seem to be interested. So just like respect that and don't try to do some like, you know, side, side door situation. Like there's a reason he, he was like, he, there's a reason he's ignoring you. Absolutely. Yeah. Get out of town with that. Uh, OP, I I don't know. I don't think there's much to say here. Basically, you're being low-key rejected and you're trying to ask, would I be an asshole if I connived my way to getting my (laughs) ex's best friend to date me? Yes. Yeah, man. That's obvious. That's true. ATA for liking one of my ex's best friends. I think we do agree. Yes, you're the asshole. Yeah, big time. Boom. We hit that one right out of the park. Quick and dirty. (laughs) AITA, for being upset that I'm not invited to my best friend's wedding. Oh boy, we've been down these roads before. You sure have. My BFF, who I've known since high school, is getting married. I was asked to be a bridesmaid, but because of COVID and visa things, they decided that they would have just family at the ceremony and have a party at a later date. I was happy with that and totally understood keeping it small. Then she tells me that they're having a few friends, but in quote unquote roles. So like one friend is a photographer and he will be there as the photographer. That makes sense. But Mm -hmm. then she tells me that my ex from high school, who I dated for three years, is going to be there to sing. He's a singer in an indie band. 
I was upset at this and didn't hide it very well. The thought that he'll get to be at my best friend's wedding and I won't makes me very sad. And honestly, it's a bit of a slap in the face as I could have had any other musician. When I told my BF about it, he said I was being silly and there was no reason to be upset. I've said that I'm fine with it because it's their day and it's not about me. But honestly, I feel really sad. I don't really understand why they would make that decision. AITA for feeling like this was not very cool of them. Interesting. I feel like, yeah. We have covered this before. Potentially not you and I. Maybe oh. me and a guestie did this one. But great. Okay. Let's hear your take. What, what's your reaction here? I mean, I, I can empathize with OP. I think that really sucks to like not be mm. able to go to your best friend's wedding when like... Right. I mean, they're not they like, but at the same time, it does make sense that they're that if their friend is a photographer, they're going to have their friend shoot the wedding. And right. I wish I had the ages because I think that's pretty key. I'm like, are you 25? Or wait, they did it in high school. OK, I'm like, are you 22? OK, that's one thing. Are you like 30? Then I don't see why, like, there would be a moratorium on on hiring your high school ex-boyfriend. I just think it's more about the feeling of it, like this guy who she's sort of connected to, who doesn't even know the couple can go, but she can't go. It's just like, yeah, that's your ex, but it's their, it's their singer. So it's like not about you. And the fact that you're not there isn't about you either. Those people are mm -hmm. doing jobs. That's true. Yeah, it's not about her, but I understand why she feels like it is because she's upset. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But in the end, I just, I think you have a right to be upset. OP, you're not an asshole for being upset, but nobody's really an asshole here. That's how I feel. I think she's being silly. I'll agree with the boyfriend because it's like, it's like you said, it's kind of like you're kind of using this tenuous connection as like a reason to take this personally when it's not personal. It doesn't seem. It's not personal. Yeah. Well put. I mean, I feel like it wasn't very cool of them, but it was also just what they wanted for their wedding. And it did hurt your feelings. And I think it's a fair thing to bring up and say, hey, it just kind of hurt my feelings when you did that. If someone mm -hmm. said something like that to me, I'd be like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. We didn't do that at you. We just, you know, he's a good singer. I mean, we love Franz Ferdinand. I can't believe you dated. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I don't mean to like butter him up. But anyways, yes, we're super sorry you weren't there. It was COVID. We love you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. They might not have even been thinking about the high school ex. I mean, they're probably like, oh, yeah, didn't they date? But they're not like, let's mm. hire her ex. Yeah, you're so right. You're so right. That's a good reframing for OP to hear. Nonetheless, I think this is a no-brainer, folks. AITA for being upset that I'm not invited to my best friend's wedding. No assholes here. None. AITA for giving my roommate a deadline. My best friend and I moved into an apartment together at the end of 2020. And at first, it was great. We both balanced chores and groceries and split the rent and bills down the middle. But at the end of the July, <laughs> at the end of July... <laughs> Sure, at the end of the July, she quit her job under the impression she would be working with an old friend of hers, our neighbor, and my boyfriend. Oh, God. However, there was a small complication, and she ended up having to go to a different store for at least two weeks. She refused. At this point, I told her that she'd have to find another job by October 1st. It's been nearly three months now, and she still doesn't have a job and has slowly stopped cleaning around the apartment. Her mom has been sending me money to help with rent, but she's still jobless. A few weeks before October 1st, I sat her down and reminded her about the deadline. She said that she didn't see the problem since her mom was helping pay rent. A-I-T-A. I'm kind of like, is this the same, the other roommate from the situation we did on the bonus? Oh my <laughs> God, yeah. Um, well, I guess I will say that I don't really see what the problem is. Right. I mean, y'all are best friends. You split rent and bills down the middle. Mom is helping with rent. So why? Right. OP... So why are you like meddling? Why are you playing mom? Honestly, like, why are you meddling and being and, and giving this person a deadline? And like, I don't know, that's kind of absurd. Like, there's no there's nothing holding her to that deadline. I don't understand the issue. Is it like no, the fact that either. the rest of the bills aren't being paid? It seems like you're just forcing I mean, the fact that she's not cleaning the house, that's valid. But why? what's the deadline for? You don't have a right to give a deadline. You're, you're, she's upholding her end of the deal, even if it is by her mother. Yeah, I, you know, I think that's perfectly clean. Um, I think, yeah, I, I don't really feel like this person has anything to be mad about unless she's not paying the bills. But then it's like, you don't give them a deadline for the job. You give them a deadline for like, this is when I need the money. Right. Right. I mean, look, I think I kind of think this their... person just has anxiety about like this person becoming a bad roommate and like and wants to kind of preempt that, you know. 
Right. I agree with that. Like, and look, it's not a great position to be in a place with someone who doesn't have a job. They're there all the time. Like, so I kind of understand it, but like, that's just not a fair reason to kick someone out of a house. It is a fair reason to see a friendship unwind, unfortunately, yeah. as harsh as it is. It can just happen because I mean, roommates yeah, I are a great way to end I don't see what the consequences are right. because it's like, you're giving her this deadline or what? Or like, she'll kick you her don't out, have, I guess that's how I, I Well, yeah. I don't know because it's like, you don't really have the power if the rent's being paid. Um, and it's if you true. don't own the apartment and you're just signing a lease together, like you don't have any ability to kick the other person out. So I guess I'm just like, what is this deadline for? And like, right. what what is the stipulation of it? I guess I can see being concerned for your friend that they're like, you know, that they don't have a job and are just like spending, I don't know, all the time at home if that's your concern. But right. I don't know. It's, it's like, I, I feel like OP is inserting themselves into this problem that's not really a problem yet. It's true. Because of that, though, I don't really have that much against OP. It's like a weird deadline that they haven't enforced or done anything with. I don't really see anyone as the asshole here. I'm trying to... I mean, I do see OP as the asshole for doing this. Like, and they're not a bad just... person. And they're not an asshole. But I just feel like in this situation, it's like... Yeah, I mean you're you're not you're not in the right for for trying to like I don't know meddle like this. I think I can meet you at that AIT if you're giving my roommate a deadline. We're saying like a soft YTA. Sure. Yeah. All right, people, we're gonna wrap up on a bit of a chonky one. Here we go. <laughs> AITA for making a mutual friend pay for her share of a trip that she opted out of attending. Oh, I'm already annoyed with this. I, I we've been here before and these. This kind of thing is so frustrating, man, when people bail and they don't pay. Ugh. Mm -hmm. This is a situation that happened at the beginning of the Rona times. This is not an ongoing event, but I'm going to set it in that year. Okay. <laughs> Sounds kind of fictional when you wrote it like that, <laughs> right? but whatever. But like, I am choosing to set this in the year of 2020. Yes. I am setting this human drama in the era <laughs> of the COVID. There we go. In May of 2020, my best friend, <laughs> F23, and I, F22. Wow, fighter jets. Sorry, terrible joke. I apologize, everyone. <laughs> Horrible joke. In May of 2020, my best friend, F23, and I, F22, were planning a future summer vacation to California in hopes Aww. that the Rona would not last till August. Oof. At the time. We, I know, right? We were very excited to go with each other on a girl's trip. But by the end of the month, my best friend, Aaron, had made things official with this guy she had been seeing for a couple of months. M24, we'll call him Jacob. In short, we all got along great and decided to invite him on the potential trips. As the week went on, Aaron and I started to hang out more and more with a friend of hers from high school, F23. Let's call her Haley. Pretty soon, the four of us all started hanging out from time to time. We ended up also inviting Haley on the summer trip. I, being very type A, took charge of all planning, flights, hotels, etc. We discussed everyone's budget and found an Airbnb that we all liked. We had a group chat where I proposed multiple places to stay and meticulously made sure that everyone was on board with the apartment. Not only did everyone individually reply in the chat that they were indeed on board, but I was with both Aaron and Haley when I booked the place. We were all discussing it. I also made sure that everyone was aware that the cancellation policy only lasted 48 hours. Fast forward about a week. We're all hanging out at Jacob's, drinking, talking. Jacob tells a story about a Tinder hookup from years prior that basically ended in two cross kids dealing with the police. I don't know what crossed ever... means. I don't know what that means, but whatever. Hmm. This girl had gone over to his apartment. They slept together. and She called the cops, claiming that he Whoa. had laced their joint with something. Whoa. He chopped it up to her being crazy and explained oh, to the police officer. Of course. Keep going. I know, right? And explained to the police officer that they had literally smoked the same joint and he was perfectly fine. She ended up leaving without any further issues. None of us noticed anything Makes off with Haley that night. Were called. <laughs> and she never said anything to either Aaron or myself. A few days later, Aaron gets a text message from Haley in a very lengthy detail explaining that Jacob's story, in addition to him using the N-word while drunk on Whoa! three separate occasions, caused her extreme discomfort and that if Aaron was going to continue to date him, that they could no longer be friends. Whoa! That's all I can say. Okay, wait. So, okay, so Haley... Gets Aaron gets a text message from Haley. Okay, so Haley basically puts their does a friendship ultimatum and says Aaron has to break up with Jacob. Mm -hmm. Okay. Aaron and I were absolutely shocked. She had never once broached this subject before, and the severe ultimatum over text threw me for a loop. Aaron is kind, passive, and talked with Haley in person in order to try and understand the sudden act. 
In short, Haley explained that she had been mulling it over for many days and that she would never change her mind because Jacob is someone she doesn't want to be associated with. We agreed with Haley that his inappropriate language was not okay. Okay. Ooh, I would not characterize it as that. Sure wouldn't. So we just, inappropriate language is you went to church and you said, fuck. I was thinking <laughs> like when I said, oh shit, in front of a group of kids. <laughs> like. <laughs> right, right. Wow, anyway, wow, so we wow, suggested wow. simply telling him <laughs> that it made us very uncomfortable and to ask him to stop, which did end up happening and he stopped. As for the story, we personally didn't see this as a sexual offense. However, she did. We tried our best to talk it out without an argument, but she was set in her decision. It was tense and semi-awkward as Aaron tried to mend the friendship, but I simply let them deal with it. Finally, the issue. Haley had still not budged after a week or two and declared that she would not be attending our vacation if Jacob was going. We considered asking him to stay back to keep the peace, but I personally thought it was rude to uninvite him when we had invited him first. Hmm. Oh, okay. The Airbnb was now a huge problem. Fresh out of college, none of us had a lot of money. Haley said that she wasn't going to pay her $375 share since she wasn't going. However, I put the whole transaction on my credit card and was not financially able or willing to cover her share. I also didn't want to split the $1,500 amongst Aaron, Jacob, and myself and pay $500 for a place that I agreed upon staying for $375. Her and I got into a heated argument. I understood her point. She wasn't going, so why should she pay? However, we were locked into this financial contract, and why should I have to pay for her share when she removed herself from the equation, would the owner of the Airbnb have given her money back because of the reasons? Nope. Eventually, Haley was convinced to pay me. After she sent me the money, she immediately blocked both myself and Aaron on all social media platforms, as well as our cell phones. Aaron was in tears for several days and took months to finally accept that their friendship was over, suddenly. I couldn't give a flying F about Haley, and I wanted to call her out for being a psychotic, heartless B. Oh, but the okay. fact that this hurt Aaron so much hurt me. Should I have just let the money go? A I T A. Due to the pandemic, the Airbnb host ended up giving us a full refund a month later, and I immediately sent Haley back her 375. Haley still hasn't unblocked or spoken to us since. Wow. So all that was for nothing. Wow. <laughs> what a nightmare. We just had to live the nightmare, and then it's like, wow, none of that needed to happen at all. This reminds me of a Twilight Zone episode where <laughs> everyone's panicking because of the nuclear apocalypse, mm -hmm. and like, like neighbors kill neighbors, and all this horrible shit happens, and then nothing, there is no nuclear apocalypse, so it's oh, all man. like a false alarm. Oh, Anyways, hit us with your take, Sarah. Wow. I mean, okay, there's a lot of moving parts here. I think the money is like a separate but unique issue. Um, and I mean, damn, I, I really have to come on Haley's side because they're like, this dude does not sound like a good dude. And they're, and they're sticking up for him over her. And like, I understand that. I don't think a friendship ultimatum is the way to go. I also don't think doing it over text is the way to go. But I also understand, like, this is a bad, this is like, I don't know, a problematic individual. And I don't want to be around this person. And like, I'm not going on this trip if he's going. I mean, that I completely get. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think. Um... And also, like, I think these people are super sus because this guy says the N word, which is not OK. and. It's not even until Haley goes completely nuclear that like, oh, you know what? Well, we're going to ask him to stop saying it. It's like, what are you should have stood up to him like the moment that that happened. Like the fact that she has to like, right. sh I don't know, shine like a, a blazing light in your face for you to be like, oh, yeah, maybe we should have. And it's also like, oh, we're going to tell him it makes us uncomfortable and ask him to stop like. No, you should be telling him that that's not okay in any sense. Like, I, exactly. So they're they're Love going that. like way too easy on this guy, and I can understand why she was like, "Well, nope, I don't want any part of this." Whack friend group culture, right there. Yeah. Toxic friend group culture. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, I really don't even have a problem with Haley because I think she kind of did the right thing. Basically, she said, "I'm not paying," and I sort of feel like that's a fair move. Because what she wants to do is exert pressure on them hmm. for them to figure it out. Now it's their problem. They lost one of the people, so they didn't need right, money. Because it's kind of like they, they they could just find someone else to go. Exactly, and that's what they should have done. They failed to do that, and I thought it was very fair of Haley. She she still paid her three seventy five, and I thought OP was spot on in in the point that you know the Airbnb host wasn't going to refund them short of a pandemic. Um, so I I really have no bones to pick with Haley. I mean. 
she basically said, look, you all acted in a way that was inappropriate. This guy acted in a way, I mean, inappropriate is a very nice way. Hateful. I would use the word hateful. Yeah. He used a very hateful word. Um, assumably, yeah. I mean, look, there's really, there's It's like, there's we all no know defense. that that's it's not 2021. okay. 2021. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. There's just no know? excuse. Do we need there's, to say yeah. it? It's no. not okay. That, no, Don't there's literally no excuse. Yeah, I mean, that's how I view Haley. That's how I view Haley. I think she she said, look, I have standards for behavior. This person violated my standards. Yeah. I didn't like the little Tinder story. It felt weird. And maybe she caught a vibe. I'm sucks. catching a vibe. I sure don't I'm like catching Jacob. a vibe, too, because I think, I'm catching like, a vibe. I, I, like, I don't know. It's painting a picture. And also, I personally think that, like, calling the police is a very extreme reaction. And, like, something happened to make that to make this girl do that i mean we don't know the truth like we probably won't ever but i don't know right well look if anything if if the the it, let's just assume jacob you know the way he if anything telling this story is itself a sign of a lack of that's actually true yeah and he just called her crazy well it's like yeah exactly you're, you're telling so, a story like about she, a crazy girl yeah i don't know really the story if nothing else is like watch who you give weed to because apparently you freaked her out she thought it was laced i mean yeah that's I've, a good I've honestly point. never i've never heard someone i actually know i have heard people go like that weed was laced and it's like i think you're you're just high bro but, but i think she she i think she like smelled what he was cooking exactly. and, that, and what he was cooking was not a good dish and 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 look i'm a big advocate of erring on the side of caution okay yeah. is is cutting this girl out necessarily it but here's here's the thing too it's like we're smelling what jacob's cooking the the n words and the cop thing those are just the tip of the iceberg i'm sure he's a douchebag in more subtle ways that weren't worth writing in the story like mm -hmm. he's giving out some kind of stanky air i don't like jacob i got a feeling he's not really a good person you know yeah or in ways that op hasn't picked up on because op is like a jacob apologist <laughs> exactly Exactly. And obviously some shit flies in this friend group that I'm frankly shocked. I mean, this is Gen Z and it's 2021 and y'all in that fly. Ooh, I mean, that's that's, I don't know where you guys point. are, but that's, that's shocking to me. Yeah, that's shocking. Yeah, you know, it's very, very alarming. It's very alarming. And, and look, I think women, the more I've come to understand, you know, it is a different world for women. It's a dangerous world for women err on the side of caution i'm i'm very for that i always believe yeah. in erring on the side of caution because if you think this individual is you know dangerous or shady or also just or if he's even mad just like yeah not someone whose morals like align with yours and I, I really think that you are the company you keep and when you kind absolutely. of absolutely and like hanging out with this guy is kind of implicitly co-signing his behavior and i wouldn't want to be a part of that i think that's a great way to put it hanging out with people who say racist hateful things that's co-signing it i ain't gonna yeah. hang out with you get out of my life if you talk like that you idiot and especially if you think like that really that's the thing it, it indicates an underlying hatred and a lack of understanding and big fuck jacob vibes Haley did nothing wrong folks aita for making a mutual friend pay for her share of a trip that she opted out of attending well that's a good question i don't know where i am there i don't like your friend group culture but it was fair for Haley to pay in all frankness I, yeah that's why i feel like i'm wondering if the payment is a separate issue because i do kind of now that i'm thinking about it i'm like if you back out i, I mean i have a trip planned uh jokes on me right um, but I'm kind of like, well, if I were to back out, would I still pay for my share of the Airbnb? And like, I certainly would offer at least because like, these are my good friends. But she is also like, well, fuck these people like, you know, so she doesn't really care to do the right thing because she doesn't care about burning the bridge. I don't know if she should have. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think in this case, it's like, who's getting burned? It's Aaron. Or no, not, not Aaron. It's OP. So OP yeah. was set to be the victim of this burning. Well, actually, no, it was going to be a three-way thing. It was going to impact OP, Haley, well, and then yeah, Jacob. It's either OP takes the hit on her credit card. They all split the hit equally. Right. I feel like finding a third person is not really realistic when you're talking about flights because that's a big expense to try to bring someone on board for. Yeah, absolutely. So late in the game, too. I mean... I, I think OP had a right to ask for her money back. I think that is the fair thing to do. It's kind of like, look, this was an unpredictable thing. We didn't know that Jacob was a complete monster. Haley just really switched her view on him and said, no, I'm not going to I'm not going to be around this individual who is at the very best case, a gigantic bag of douche, hateful douche. 
That's the best case scenario for Jacob at this juncture. I don't think Haley did anything wrong. I don't think OP was unfair in demanding yeah. that she pay her share. I, I, I think, look, I think if I had done this, if I had planned a trip for my friends, I would have taken the cash right away. And I urge people to. Oh, pay. yeah, that's so true. Again, err on the side of caution. Get those Venmos in before you book the uncancelable thing. Like, that's why 100% would you, true. Why would you lean that liability on yourself? Mm. You know, yeah. and I think it's fair to say the, the Airbnb host would not have accepted this reason. And so strictly in a transactional sense, I, I think it is fair. So I'm not against OP. I, I'm really truly not against OP. I, I do want to say to OP, look, Haley didn't do anything wrong. Haley yeah, she's definitely not wrong. a psychotic, heartless bitch. So she's not psychotic. Absolutely OP. not. I think she's trying to say this behavior was she did not foresee it. And it came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly, that. exactly. Yeah, so she's not literally saying, but she's saying crazy. She's saying like this is you know wild. Yeah, in the whatever. way that exactly it was wild. in the way that you it was, call like any woman who asserts herself crazy, right? This is exactly just, that I'm turned saying up it was a her asser- Yeah, it was her asserting a boundary, you know, and yeah. that's it. And it was a fur boundary. She didn't want to be around this person. That's her right. Now, was it her right to end the friendship? No, actually, I, I don't know if that's. Fair. Well, I guess it kind of is yeah. based on what you're saying. You're, you, you are the company you, you keep. Want. You've got a racist ass boyfriend, and yeah, I don't want to be around. I don't want to be with someone who's co-signing on piece of shit boyfriend vibes. That feels that feels fair to it's me. Fair. I mean, it's kind of like if you care about Aaron, I think that cutting her off is only going to like push her into Jacob's arms more. But that said, you're not under any obligation to like stick around while somebody dates a piece of shit. Very true. I don't really like this friend group. And I guess I would say, well, what, what if we take the charge this way and say AITA for like sticking with my boyfriend and not even calling him out after he repeatedly uses the N word? I'm, I'm almost like, I think I, I would know, call but you an I'm also for just that. like, OP is slightly removed from the situation. Like, that's yes, true. it's her friend, but it's not her boyfriend. And, and she was just giving background of like why this transactional situation kind of like came to be so like from the money standpoint oh this is interesting huh i'm like from the money standpoint i don't know if she did anything wrong but i think now her acting surprised that Haley still blocked them is a little absurd it is a little absurd i don't blame Haley for what she did and i don't think it was crazy no definitely not yeah no i think op just has this huge blind spot like she can't see why this guy like why this girl was like feeling this way and is just writing her off, you know? Right. I guess because it's her best friend. Yeah. Who's Danny? Yeah, exactly. They were biffles. Hmm. AATA for making a mutual friend pay for her share of a trip that she opted out of attending. I mean, it kind of hurts to hear because there is an (laughs) asshole in the story. Yes, I know. But we're pitting two parties against each other, which is OP and Haley. And given that those are the two parties, I am saying... No assholes here. Here's the thing. I could give a slight YTA just because OP is like not seeing the woods from the trees. Mm -hmm. But for just the money aspect, I could say no assholes here. But but I guess like the way that it's been framed and like turned around on Haley as if she's this psychotic bitch for doing this is making me lean like a like a YTA. Ooh, yeah, you're right. Calling Calling Haley the names, OP's lack of empathy toward Haley, attacking Haley, only fixating on how this hurt Aaron and not really being able to realize that Haley didn't necessarily want to even end the friendship. She just thought this guy was toxic as shit. Okay, I can give a slight YTA for that. All I'm right. with you. I feel bad because this is a listener. You got it. It's a submitter. But update us on Jacob. I hope they're not still together. Yeah, or I hope Jacob stops talking that way and, you know, learns about racism and maybe, you know, maybe he we're just getting a horrible first impression of him and maybe True. that's what happened to Haley, but she still has a right to be alarmed and to 100%, cut his ass off. 100%. I think it's very fair. I would just say like OP like just I know I'm and I know we've been like a little bit harsh, but I don't know, if people are bringing red flags like I don't know, don't be so quick to write it off. Very true. AITA for making a mutual friend pay for her share of a trip that she opted to have attending. We actually agree. Sarah brought us into YTA. We love you, OP, but also fuck Jacob. Listen, we're all assholes at some point and also fuck Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, that's the app. Thanks so much for listening. Have a very happy new year. Much love yeah. to you for y'all. Please rate, review, and subscribe. Join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash AITA pod. Sarah? Yeah. See you in 2022. Woo. We'll see you there, folks. Bye. All right. Bye.